Good morning, everybody, or if it's not morning, wherever you're at. I hope that you're having a wonderful day so far. So I've been wanting to put out this video for quite some time since it's been so long since the last time I put out a video. So first and foremost, thank you for joining me. And part of the reason I'm here is because I think we all need yoga right now more than ever. That being said, there is so much going on right now. And as human beings, we tend to act as if we're sponges and we're constantly taking in new information, constantly absorbing every single day. Just more and more information is coming to us. And with this, I mean, it's amazing because we're learning, we're growing, we're evolving, adapting, all of that good stuff. But there comes a time where we need to pause and we need to bring out the sponge. Because with all of this new information at our fingertips, chances are we've been spending a lot of time up here. And if that resonates with you at all, then this practice is definitely for you. And, you know, with that, when we spend a lot of time in our mind, we're not really being present. I mean, we might have glimpses of existing in the present moment within our minds, but chances are we're thinking about the future, you know, what's going to happen down the road one, two, three months from now, or maybe we're lingering in the past and we're thinking about what life was like before COVID, right? But as crazy and chaotic as this time is, this is an amazing time to be alive. And it might not seem like that right now, but we are witnessing almost a systematic downfall so that something bigger and better can blossom. And we use the laws of nature to remind ourselves of this. And so just as every year when the fall season rolls around, nature, you know, the trees, they have to adapt and change. They release and let go of what doesn't serve them anymore, as do we. And so we're approaching this season where, you know, we have all of this craziness going on in the world around us. And so we have to go within now more than ever and access our highest selves so that we can know what is worth holding on to and what is worth letting go of. And so today, that's all I ask of you is to just ground yourself fully in the here and the now. And the practice doesn't ask us to always be positive. That's unrealistic, right? We're going to have moments of negativity here and there. But the practice does ask us to do our best to always be present, right? Because when we are present, when we are aware, then we're able to think clearly. We're able to access our highest selves and make decisions that don't only benefit ourselves, but benefit the greater good of humanity. So let's go ahead and get started. Enough of me talking. Come to a comfortable seat on your mat. Whatever feels comfortable for you. So it might be cross-legged, maybe lotus, or legs out long. Don't ever think it. Just sit down. Allow your hands to fall wherever it feels natural, maybe on the knees, maybe by your side. And then just roll the shoulders up and down a couple times, a right? circular motion. And then the next time the shoulders come down and back, allow them to stay there. And then start to draw the shoulder blades together behind you so that you feel this little opening sensation of heart center. And with this, I want you to firmly root your tailbone into the earth. And now pretend that there was a string attached to the crown of your head that was pulling you up from the ceiling. So you have this like slightest little engagement of the core, hugging navel in towards the spine. And now go ahead and just let the eyes fall shut. Relax the jaw. Notice what's going on with the tongue. So if the tongue is pressing up against the roof of the mouth, just allow the tongue to kind of dangle in the middle of the mouth, right? So there's all these little places that we store tension in the body and we might not even be aware of it. And then notice if you're firmly squeezing the eyes shut. And if you are, just allow the eyelids to gently stay shut, almost as if they could slip open if they had to. And now let's go ahead and just take a full deep breath in through the nose, fill the lungs, fill the diaphragm, feel the air travel all the way down to the lowest part of the belly. Take a moment to pause. And now open the mouth, exhale. Good. 
One more just like that. Full deep breath in through the nose. Fill up all the way. And open the mouth. Sigh it out. So now we're going to just simply seal off the lips and allow the breath to travel in through the nose and back out through the nose. So one more time. Inhale in through the nose. Fill up all the way. Exhale out through the nose. And so with this pattern of inhaling in through the nose, back out through the nose, we're going to do something called square breathing. It's very simple. It's a four count in inhale followed by a four count pause, followed by a four count exhale, followed by a four count pause. So on your next inhale, inhale for the count of one, two, three, four, pause, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, pause, two, three, four, inhale, two, three, four, pause, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, pause, two, three, four. One more time. Inhale, two, three, four, pause, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, pause, two, three, four, and now begin to match the length of the inhale to the length of the exhale. So you can stick with a four count if that works for you or maybe a six or eight count, just find a rhythm of the breath that you will be able to stay consistent with. And it's said that when we turn the focus inward, when we bring the awareness to our breathing, we not only turn a little bit more into the present moment, but we calm the parasympathetic nervous system. We step away from that fight or flight response system and we're able to feel a sense of relaxation. And so before we start to really move our bodies, take a moment here and just notice what has already showed up. And if there's anything that stands out in particular, maybe you begin to cultivate your intention around that. And if you're not sure what to make your intention, then I invite you to join me with the intention of being present, being here. Let's go ahead and open the eyes. On your next inhale, reach the arms all the way up overhead. You can look up to bring the neck into this as well. And as you exhale, extend through the palms, reach the arms back down to the earth. Good. Twice more like that. Inhale, reach all the way up. Exhale, lower the hands to the earth. Good. Listen closely. Inhale, reach the arms all the way up. This time at the top, bring the palms together. As you exhale, turn the torso towards the right knee and then lower the hands to the earth. Send the eye gaze over the right shoulder if that feels okay on the neck. And keep rolling the shoulders down and back here. Stay with the breath as best you can. It's just a gentle twist to begin. You don't need to force anything here. And then go ahead and take a final inhale. As you exhale, just gently untwist and back through center. Inhale, extend those arms all the way back up. Bring the palms together at the top. As you exhale, Twist to the left, lower the hands to the earth, send the eye gaze over the left shoulder, keeping that nice twelve spine on your knees. And then go ahead and take one more deep breath in here. As you exhale, untwist, you return to center, and then in no fancy way, come out of your seat. Make your way on the hands and knees. 
Stacking the shoulders over the wrist. Pressing into the pointer finger and from here. As you inhale, drop the belly, lift the eye gaze, find your cow pose. And then as you exhale, round and curl, push the earth away from you to tuck the chin. So coming back to cow on the inhale, drop the belly, look all the way up. And as you exhale, reverse that movement, come to your cat toe. Sometimes I even untuck the toes and press the tops of the feet into the mat here. On your own now, inhale, spring you back to cow. Exhale, spring you back to cow. And then just take a couple more of those. Feel free to incorporate any other movement. Maybe some circles of the head and neck. Maybe circles of the whole body. Just starting to move all the body, just to know they all float in between the joints around, waking up the body here. Okay. Take a moment, we'll meet back in our tabletop to our back. Go ahead and tuck the toes here. Take a deep breath in, and as you exhale, lift the knees six inches off the mat. So finding a hovering table. Try to keep a little micro bend in your elbows here so that we're protecting the shoulders. And if you tend to have sensitive wrists in your yoga practice like I do, the more you press into the, the knuckles and the pads of the fingers, then the less press or the yeah, the less pressure that you'll be putting on the wrist. So Stay really focused on where you're dispersing your energy within the hands, within the arms. And now focusing on the core here with every exhale, can you hug the belly button in a little bit closer? Try to widen the space in between your shoulder blades. Take one more breath in. Exhale, lift the hips. Downward facing dog. Let the head hang nice and heavy. And as a matter of fact, go ahead and shake it out. Now the head yes. Now the head no. And then go ahead and just paddle the feet a bit. Take a little organic movement, just as we did a moment ago. So in your downward facing dog, just begin to find a little bit of stillness. Let the head become the heaviest part of you, so the back of the neck can open up. And then again, can you root the shoulders down and back, but while you're doing that, can you press the hands down and forward? Make sure your feet are about hips to distance apart. And then just for this first round of facing dog, let's take a little micro bend in the knees and see if you can get the hips an inch higher here. So nice, long spine. Take a full deep breath in through the nose. Again, open the mouth, exhale. On your next inhale, look between your hands, and as you exhale, just start to slowly feel to the feet to the top of the mat, waking up the backs of the legs. You can literally go heel first and then toes. And then as you arrive, take those feet about hips with a distance apart. Deep, deep bend in the knees here. We're gonna find right jaw forward fold. And feel free to bend your opposite arm to elbow. Let the crown of the head come down towards the earth. So again, let the back of the neck and open up and release. Notice how deep can you breathe here. Can you send the breath all the way down to the little back? One more breath in. Exhale, release the hands down, breathe down the feet as you start to roll up to standing one vertebrae at a time. Let the head and neck come up flat. On an inhale, reach your arms all the way up overhead. Exhale, swan dive, extend through the palms, forward fold. Heart center stays open here. As you inhale, find a halfway lift, bring hands to shin to the side. Exhale, plant the hands, step the left foot back, lower the left knee down. Inhale, reach both arms up, low lunge. Relax those shoulders as you settle in here. If you want to go a little bit deeper, untap the back toes. So to just gradually work that right hip back so the left hip stays in line with it. 
Notice that you're just dumping all of your weight forward, trying to keep the core engaged here. So we almost feel this little tuck of the tailbone here. Any long spine, keeping that in mind, take a full breath in. As you exhale, plant the hands straight in the right leg, Ardha Padmanasana, half split. Again, inhale, re bend the right knee, reach the arms overhead, and low lunge. Exhale, Ardha Padmanasana. One more time. Inhale to bend the right knee, sweep the arms up. Exhale, straight in the right leg. This time we'll stay for a few breaths. Feel free to become a little passive through the head and neck here, just allowing the shoulders to relax. Good. One more deep breath. Inhale, knees. As you exhale, breathe on that right knee. Plant the hands, tuck the back toes. Inhale, lift that right leg and up and back. Three-legged dog. Exhale, squeeze the right knee in towards the nose. Round and throw like your cat pose. Two more times. Inhale, extend the right leg up and back. Exhale, knee to nose. Final round. Inhale, extend. Exhale, squeeze it in. Inhale, extend, and this time as you exhale, stack the right hip on top of the left, let the foot stand out to the side, so otherwise known as tail of the dog. And then just notice that you subconsciously let all of your weight dump into the left hand, and if so, can you redistribute the weight so that the right arm is doing just as much work as the left? Feel free to take some angle circles, or maybe you can even bend and straighten that right knee a few times. And then let's go ahead and just take a final breath in. And as you exhale, return to your downward facing dog. And on your next inhale, ripple forward to your plank pose. Exhale, return to downward facing dog. Twice more like that. Inhale, plank, keep the core engaged. Exhale, downward facing dog. Last time, inhale, plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, look forward at the hands. Exhale, step or jump if you feel ready to the top of the mat. Inhale, find that halfway lift. Find a nice flat back here. And as you exhale, deep in the fold, release the head and neck. Inhale, reverse, line dive. Open heart center, reach the arms all the way up. Exhale, bring the hands together at heart center. Inhale, reach the arms all the way back up. Look up. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen the back. Exhale, plant the hands, step the right foot back, lower the right knee down. Inhale, reach both arms up, low the lunge, asana, asana. Feel free to untuck the right toes if you choose to go a little deeper here. And then again, our core is still engaged, so we're hugging the navel in. With that, pull the left hip back so that the right hip is in line with the left. And then send the butt into the right hip flexor. Soften the jaw, relax the face. Take a full breath in, in and as you exhale, plant the hands straight in the left leg. Are the Hanama, Hanamanasana. Have a time today. Inhale, we bend the left knee, reach hands all the way up. Exhale, straight in that left leg, like you're moving through water. One more round. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, half split. This time we will stay just a few breaths here. Again, if it feels better to kind of tuck the chin and just let that head dangle, that's okay. Deep breaths. Remember, your breath is what will not only really keep you present, but what will create the space for new things to grow. Last inhale, flex the left toes. Exhale, bring it down the left knee, plant the hands. Tuck the right toes, lift the right knee off the mat. Inhale, lift that left leg, knee up and back. Exhale, left knee to nose. Right knee curls, leg for the elbows here. Inhale, extend the left leg up and back. Exhale, knee to nose. Squeeze it in. You got this. Inhale, extend. Left leg up and back. Exhale, knee to nose. Core is engaged. Inhale, 
done, exhale, stack the left hip on top of the right, let the foot fan out to the side, and then notice the more weight dump into the right hand, and it's so when you make the left arm do a little more work. Shoulders are down and back, head is heavy. Take any movement you took on the first side, whatever feels good here, maybe some circles of the ankle. And then go ahead and place the left foot down next to the right, coming back to your dog. Inhale, ripple forward, find your plank. This time, stay for the exhale. So again, activating our booty on the banda, our core lock here. Tuck the tailbone under. With every exhale, can you put all of the focus on that midsection here? Listen closely, take a final breath in, and as you exhale, bend the elbows, chatter around you to the belly for the count of five, four, three, two, one and a half, and one, let it go, keep the thumb up straight, make the ribs face, and now zip up the elbows so they're glued to the side bodies, untuck the toes if you haven't already, three rounds of baby cobra, tap the forehead down to the earth, Inhale, lift the chest, press into the tops of the feet, squeeze the glutes, exhale, release. Twice more, inhale to lift, you drag the hands back this time to bring the chest forward, exhale, let it go. Third and final, inhale, lift, exhale, let it go. Inhale, press back to hands and knees, and as you exhale, tuck the toes, downward facing dog. Pull the breath in, pull the breath out, inhale, look forward, as you exhale, step or jump, top of your mat, inhale, lengthen the spine, halfway left, exhale, deep in the fold, inhale, reach the arms all the way up, open heart center, exhale, bring the hands together at heart center. We'll close down salutation A, three in the monster A, one breath to movement. Main thing is to go at a pace that works for you, so stay with your breath. Challenge yourself to stay with the breath, even if it's a little ahead or a little behind me. So on your inhale, reach the arms all the way up. Exhale, dive forward, let it go. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step or jump the feet back right away, chat around your same exhale here. As you inhale, come back to cobra, or maybe you're ready for upward facing dog. Thighs off the mat, straight arms. As you exhale, we'll be back in downward facing dog. Take five full breaths here. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. 
Inhale, reach the arms all the way up. Open the heart. Exhale, bring the hands together at the center. Final round. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, happy lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step or jump your feet back, chaturanga. If you're jumping back, jump straight to bent elbows. Inhale for your back bend. Exhale, down your facing dog. And so as many of you probably know, that's our vinyasa, that motion. Feel free to skip it at any point throughout today, or feel free to add it in even when I don't offer it. Right? This is your practice, your time to take a little scan and you know evaluate what it is that you need. And it might be different from yesterday. It might be exactly the same. It just depends, right? We are constantly evolving, constantly adapting, which means our needs too are evolving and adapting and changing. On your next inhale, look forward. Exhale, step or jump top of your neck. Inhale, find that halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reach your hands all the way up overhead. Exhale, bring the hands together at the center. Walk your feet together to touch if they're not already, and then start to squeeze inner thighs towards one another, zipping up the legs, almost as if we just had one big leg rather than two normal legs. And then you can look at the my chair pose. As you inhale, sit back, keep the weight in the heels, reach your arms overhead. And then exhale, relax the shoulders. And that little tuck of the tail from here so the low belly is engaged. And with that, every exhale, we hug the belly button in towards the spine. Listen close, deep breath in. As you exhale, swing the right arm back behind you, eye leads to the right hand. This is like a variation of water wheel, but in our chair. So it's a chair twist. Every exhale is going to bring that right hand back a little bit more. So the back of the right hand is pressing away from the front body, creating space in the front of the chest. And just notice what's going on in the hips. If they're swaying off to the left, can you bring them back to the right ear? On your next inhale, reach the right arm back up and turn to your chair pose. Exhale, to the left arm back behind you, add it to the left of your hips. Stay with the breath. Every inhale fills you up. And with your exhale, you might twist a little deeper, maybe pressing the back of the left hand back just a little bit more. Inhale, bring the left arm back up with the cross and on chair pose. Exhale, fold, let it go. Inhale, find your halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, so for jump the feet back, take the vinyasa if you want it. If not, just meet me straight if I'm a facing dog, no big deal. On your next inhale, lift the right leg high. As you exhale, step the right foot in between your hands. Firm up the back leg, squeeze the left glute, stack the left heel over the toes so you're on ball of the foot. And then as you inhale, reach both arms up high lunge. Take a full breath in, and as you exhale, send that right arm back behind you, reach the left arm forward, just like we did in our chair pose a moment ago. With that, try to maintain that 90 degree angle in the right knee. If it feels okay on the neck, again, send the eye knees to the right hand, the right fingertips. And with every exhale, can you deepen the twist, rotating from the midsection. Inhale, reach that right arm all the way back up, high lunge. As you exhale, plant the hands, bring both hands to the inside of that right foot, and then we're going to just pin it all the way around towards the back edge of our mat for skidadasana. So left knee bends, right heel stays on the earth. You can bring the hands in the heart center. Your hands might stay on the earth. Or maybe you exalt the arms or bind. So last option is going on. We have five full breaths here. Take a final breath in. And as you exhale, 
release the hands, start to pivot back around towards the top of your mat. So all ten toes are facing forward. One hand on each end of that right foot. And we're just going to pop the belly foot in a couple inches, grabbing down through the heel. Start to straighten that right leg as much as your body allows, coming into our pyramid pose, or head to knee. Heavy stroke to nasa. And again, I know some teachers say to lift in the back, right? That's okay. But it, it feels good to just be heavy and passive through the upper back and shoulders. That's okay, too. And then just as we did in our low crescent lunge, start to pull the right hip back gradually. Take a final breath in, final breath out. Bring the hands to the hips, and as you inhale, start to rise up with a flat back. Take the hands into heart center. We're going to move into our warrior three from here. So on an inhale, just start to micro down the right knee. Shift a little weight forward, and as you exhale, can you close the left toes off the mat? You can get this T shape with the body. And then feel free here to take any variation that, that serves you. Maybe you bring the arms out to airplane wings or extend them out long in front of you. Maybe you go for the variation that challenges you. And then stay with the breath, even if it means backing out of the pose. One more inhale. And as you exhale, bring the hands to the center if they're anywhere else. Come to stand all the way up at the top of your neck. Close the eyes for a moment. Notice how different that right side of the body feels from the left. And just recognize how powerful you are when you put your mind and you turn your awareness into the present moment. You are able to manifest so much space in your lives. Go ahead and open the eyes. Walk the feet back together to touch. Come back into that same chair twisting thing, but we're just going to flow it breath to movement a few times. So as you inhale, sit back, weight in the heels, Utkatasana. Exhale, right arm swings back, left arm forward. Right away, inhale, come back to chair. Exhale, left arm back, right arm forward. Try to keep the hips stable. Inhale, chair. Exhale, right arm back. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, left arm back. One more time, each side. Inhale, chair. Exhale, right arm back. Inhale, chair. Exhale, left arm back. Inhale, chair. Exhale, fold. Let it go. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands. Step or jump the feet back to low for your vinyasa if you want it. Otherwise, knee lean downward facing dog. On your next inhale, lift the left leg high. Exhale, step your left leg in between your hands. Wiggle it on off if it didn't make it. Squeeze the right glute, stack the right heel over the toes so you're on the ball of the foot. And as you inhale, reach both arms up high and orange. Notice what's going on in the hands. So shoulders are down and back, but hands stay active, right? We don't want any lazy fingertips. Energize here, ignite your power. Take a full breath in. As you exhale, drop the left arm back behind you. Eye gaze to the left. You might already notice one side feels a little different. That's okay. That's normal. Try to maintain that deep bend in the left knee. Every exhale will twist you a little bit deeper. On your next inhale, reach the arms back up high lunge. And as you exhale, plant the hands. Bring the left knee to the inside of the left foot. We're going to pivot all the way around, bending the right knee. The stand off now, the back of the mat. So again, maybe the hands stay on the earth. They might come to heart center, or exalt, or bind. Deep breaths. Final breath in wherever you're at. And as you exhale, release wherever you're coming from and pivot back around towards the top.
top of your mat. Bending or bringing both hands to one edge of the left foot. Each edge of the left foot. <laughs> and then we'll have the right foot in a couple of inches. Start to straighten the left leg as much as your body allows, coming in to push those to mass on that head to knee. And you might keep your hands on the earth. You might start to float the arms behind you. Again, listen to what feels right. Tap into your intuition. Final breath in, final breath out. Bring the hands to your hips, and as you inhale, rise up to that back. Go ahead and take the hands into the heart. Second balance, warrior three. Inhale, stretch to micro bend that left knee. Shift the weight forward. Exhale, float the right toes off the mat. Finding your balance. Take any arm variation that serves you.
really about stepping out of my comfort zone. And how comfortable can I be when I enter that zone? And just remember, everything that we practice here on the mat is to make us a little bit stronger, a little bit more confident when we practice those same things when we leave the mat. Maybe the right arm comes around back into the left hip crease. Most important part is the breath. If the left turn is around the back, bring it back to the earth. A little shakier on this side for me. And then lower the right leg back down. Walk the right hand back under the right shoulder. And as you inhale, reach the left arm all the way up. Open the chest. Exhale, come back to your table. Inhale, tuck the toes. Exhale, downward facing dog. Full breath in. Full breath out. Inhale, lift the right leg high behind you. Exhale, bring it through for pigeon, right knee behind the right wrist. Right foot behind the left wrist, we're as close as it'll go. Left your right foot, this is important here, so we're protecting the alignment of the knee and hip. As soon as that foot becomes unflexed, we're more likely to uh, put ourselves at risk of injury, which we don't want to do. And so find a moment here to just kind of wiggle the hips into place. Maybe even spending a breath or two upright. But then when you're ready, take a deep, deep breath in. Lengthen out the spine. Lift up out of the pelvic floor here. And as you exhale, carry that lengthened spine over the front leg with you. Lowering down to the level that feels right. So it might be forearms. It might be on the palm still. Or maybe it's all the way down to the forehead. Close the eyes. Deep breath. We're looking to meet our edge here. So as soon as this starts to become painful, back off. If it's just a lot of discomfort, if it's a lot of sensation you're feeling, a lot of tension, send the breath into those tight spaces. Focus on softening specifically with the exhale. Your breath is your friend here. Do not resist it. Do not hold the breath but rather utilize it to get to know yourself a little bit more. Left foot is flexed. 
And then again, take any little micro adjustments that you need to set up here. It's better to get all of that fidgeting out of your system now before we commit. So fidgeting is usually a sign of just a lot of activity going on in the brain. And that's what can cause all of that discomfort. So allow yourself to just kind of get it out now. And then when you're ready, deep, deep breath in, lift up and lengthen. And as you exhale, commit to the pose, soften, maybe the forehead comes to the earth. A lot of the times we think that when we slow the practice and we start to come into these more restorative postures, these more yin type postures, a lot of the times we assume or we think that it'll be easier. But the reality is, most of the time, it is just as hard as the more active and dynamic poses, if not even harder. And it's kind of the same thing with when we leave the mat. You know, we think slowing down will give us a sense of relaxation. And oftentimes our brain starts to kind of pick up the pace and we get in our heads a lot and we again, tend to leave the present and start to think about the future or the past. And so I challenge you in those moments, both here on the mat and both when you leave, to return to the breath. If slowing down is hard for you, like it is for me sometimes, can you focus your awareness on the breath? And if this sounds challenging, you can literally tell yourself, I am breathing in, I am breathing out. And it sounds so silly, it doesn't sound like it would do very much for you, but that's the practice. Gently make your way back to the palms if you're anywhere else. Bend your right knee if you have the space. Reach around with the right arm, touch the right foot. Start to pull the heel in towards the glute. And then go ahead and just take one more deep breath in. Exhale, release wherever you are at. Come back to that three-legged dog, nice and slow. Take any movement that was my kids that just stopped. I don't know if you could hear that. Lots of good juicy stuff happening in our bodies. And then go ahead and come back to down and facing dog. If you're with me and you want a final vinyasa to kind of clear all of that out, then on your next inhale, ripple forward, find your plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Make it your best vinyasa yet. Inhale for your back bend. Exhale, downward facing dog. Deep, deep breath in through the nose, fill the lungs. Open the mouth, sigh it out. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step or jump all the way through to your seat. Take it till you make it, as my um, old guru used to say. She would still be my current favorite, but she lives quite a ways away, so love you, Monica, if you're watching this. <laughs> and let's go ahead and come right down to our back. So with control, take the feet about hip to distance apart. Hands come in towards one another, palms facing one another. Deep breath in, lift her center, and as you exhale, roll down one vertebra at a time. And then as you arrive, slide your heels in close to the glutes. We're going to set up for a round of two back bends. So starting with our bridge pose, inhale, lift the hips, squeeze the glutes. That's important for protecting the low back. And then if you do want to go a little deeper, start to clasp the hands beneath you and shimmy the shoulder blades closer towards one another. 
And then just notice what's going on on the uh, inner thighs. I would have said in the inner thighs. I guess that's true too. But activate the inner thighs in a way that um, it feels almost like you're holding a water bottle in between that. So our inner thighs are engaged, our glutes are engaged, our pelvis is engaged, right? We're lifting our hips towards the ceiling and now breathe into all of those open spaces. Send the breath as low as it will go. This is a really nice counter pose for our pigeon where we were just kind of compressing this front part of the hip. Take one more breath in, lift the hips a little bit higher, and as you exhale, release back down to your back, and just start to windshield away from the knee side to side. In a moment, we'll find stillness with the legs again. So option for one more bridge like we just did, which is perfectly fine. Many benefits, or if you feel ready, full wheel, bring the hands to the outer edges of the ears, both sides of the face, and on your inhale, lift the hips, squeeze the glutes, whether you're in bridge or wheel. We are squeezing those glutes, and we are again breathing as deeply as we can while keeping the inner thighs engaged. If you're in wheel, try to let that head hang heavy, don't hold it up. Gently roll back to the back, hug your knees in. A few more back side to side. Take a deep inhale, and now as you exhale, let the knees fall to the right. Stacking both legs on top of the right hip. Again, you might manually kind of move the hips towards center. And then open the arms, let the eyes go to the left. You might even bring the right hand to the outer left side. And as you start to slow down your practice here, can you keep the focus on your breath? Let's just go ahead and take one more deep breath in on this side. And as you exhale, hug the knees back through center. Rock a little bit more side to side. Give yourself a great big hug. And then place both feet on the earth. Let the soles of the feet come together and let the knees open up nice and wide. And then bring one hand to the heart, one hand to the belly. Close the eyes, soften all of the muscles of the face. Soften all of the muscles of the whole body for that matter. And again, as we slow the practice, slow the breath, but keep the awareness on the breath. 
and you can use the placement of your hands to literally feel the inhale filling you up and the exhale to empty you back out. And maybe with every exhale, you allow yourself to just let go of a little bit more. And so yogis, this is my final offering for you before Shavasana. If there are any other poses you feel like you need, anything at all that will help you kind of close out your practice in a way that serves you, then take the next minute or so to get to those poses now. Otherwise, feel free to stay here and linger a little bit longer, or when you're ready, extend the legs out long, bring the arms down by your side, close the eyes, part the lips, allow the tongue to come away from the roof of the mouth once again, and allow yourself to come into the final pose of our practice, Shavasana. Just like all of the other poses, Shavasana is a pose that we practice to get better at over time. And it sounds kind of ridiculous because we're just lying here on our backs, but what we're ultimately practicing here is the act of surrendering. All of the other asanas, all of the other poses where we got focusing on being in control and where our awareness goes uh, with that control, right? Focusing on the movement of the body, on the breath, on um, our attention. All of that is about being in control. And so Shavasana is the counterpose to all of that. And Shavasana is about doing the exact opposite and letting go of control. And Shavasana is our reminder that in this practice, there has to be a balance. We are not always in control. The reality is most of the time we have very little control. So we focus on the things that we can control to not necessarily become better at them, but to become more aware and more present with those things so that we can reach the highest versions of ourselves. But then the other half of the time, we must let go of that control. And we must just allow those things to happen that are out of our control to happen. And when we practice this, we experience so much more peace of mind. So allow yourself here in Shavasana to even let go of the breath. Just let it return to the natural state that it's in when you're going about your day, not thinking of it. And let your entire being become soft.
without changing a thing, just start to welcome the breath back into the body. Allow the inhale to travel back in through the nose, filling the lungs, filling the belly. Let the exhale empty you back out, softening every particle of your being. And with this breath, with this awareness of the present moment, recognize what a blessing it is to be here right now, to have a body capable to carry you through the asana practice, to have a mind conscious enough to want to do something not only for the greater good of yourself, but for the greater good of humanity. With that, start to welcome some subtle movements back into the body. Wiggle the fingers, the toes, roll out wrists or ankles, maybe even nod the head side to side. And then on an inhale, stretch those arms all the way overhead, final full body stretch. And as you exhale, hug your knees in, coming into a tight little ball. Roll onto the right or left side. And then when you're ready from your fetal position, press your way back up to a comfortable seat, coming back to the very same place we began our practice. And as you do this, just do your best to keep the eyes shut. Once again, letting the hands land wherever they feel comfortable. And just notice all that has changed since the last time you were here. Let's go ahead and take a final full deep breath in through the nose, fill the lungs, fill the belly. Open the mouth, exhale. Bring the hands together at heart center. Together we'll find one final moment of gratitude for this practice that constantly gets us out of our minds and into our bodies, becoming more aware of the present moment. Find one final moment of gratitude for one another, for this virtual community. And most importantly, find that gratitude for yourself. For, again, not only taking care of yourself and your needs, but recognizing that when you do this, everybody around you will benefit as well. And so for that, I thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. And namaste. Thank you again, yogis, and I hope to see you all, or maybe not see you, but hear about you all for taking in these classes more in the future. I hope to put out more as I feel the world deeply, deeply, deeply needs yoga right now. All of us need to unite rather than separate, and when we get connected to our highest selves, we're able to do that just a little bit more. So thank you, yogis, and have a beautiful rest of your day.